and the colour is just starting. So this works much, much better without polarisation, or should I say, yeah, without with the polarisation turned off, because you get some absolutely epic reflections in the water. Done the obligatory panorama. You can't believe the amount of footprints that are around here. Oh, I wish I had a wide angle. Oh. I'm going to try to do a, I'm going to do a panorama from down here as well. That to be very quick. Good thing about having a mirrorless, I can spend less time while I have to let the mirror settle down when I'm doing panoramas. So with my Nikon D750, when I was doing panoramas I'd have to take the three, wait a split, split second, take a three, wait a split second, but with this one, with the Olympus, I can three, move three, move three, move three, move three it means there's less likelihood that I'm going to struggle with post-processing to merge the clouds together. Yeah, this is absolutely epic. For, for reference, I am at 30mm ISO 200. Three shot HDR. Let's have a look what we had. We had 30th of a second, 125th of a second, and 8th of a second. I can't be expected to turn around and for somebody to be stuck behind me. So you can't actually get around this lake, I assume, because there's a huge private sign there. And the clouds are moving, but not that fast. And what can happen is that by the time they get into the composition they've, they've they have vanished now that is some moody light what I don't want to do is slip into that mentality where I think because facing that way is a lone tree I can't see it nope I'm not going there I'm not going there literally and uh, mentally Yeah, I think them clouds are coming towards me. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get them in the frame. I'm kind of done here. I've only been here 15 minutes. Here. So the, the, there are three locations that I can see here. There are probably hundreds more that I can't see. The one I photographed, which is the branch I've just mentioned. We've got the boat, which will be well photographed and I've been here before. The last time I came here, that boat was about 50 meters over there and you've got the uh, trees yeah as I mentioned whether you can see it or not the clouds that are over there the huge patch of clouds have dissipated as they've moved along the way so I'm, I'm going to photograph the three trees or I'm going to compose it so I'm photographing the three trees because I can I am mindful of a video recently posted by Steve Lone Irons and I guess the subtext of what he was saying or what I got from it is don't be lazy now that may not have been his, his, his intention and I suspect it, it wasn't but it's it's very comforting to come back to a, a place you've photographed before and there's a logic behind that as well. You know where you need to stand to get the photograph. The problem you fall into is, are you coming back because it's easy? Or are you coming back to better what you photographed before? Now, as I mentioned earlier on, the last time I came, that boat wasn't there. It was over there, so I couldn't photograph it. So I've come back. Uh, to photograph in, in in better conditions than I have before. 
I can give, uh, Thomas he can give me a nudge, I have to say. But I was in the area anyway, so I thought I'd give it a go. But I, I, I guess, to paraphrase what Steve O'Neill was saying, and he doesn't need me to paraphrase it, because he did it, well, because he did it eloquently enough himself, but I will do, is you should go back to a location to better what you've got before. What am I going back for? Am I going to better what I've produced before? Now I've got one or two, and I probably would put it at one or two images, and I think I've done 200 videos. I've taken thousands of photographs from hundreds of places. I've probably got two pictures that I doubt very much whether I could ever emulate. Can you emulate yourself? Two photographs that I would, or I could produce a better photograph. Two locations where I could produce a better photograph. If I can remember what they are, I'll pop them on, but I think one's Sycamore Gap. I don't think I'll ever beat that, apart from if I get some star trails. So, the colour's gone, the sun has officially risen. So it's time to head over towards the three lone trees. What I was talking about earlier on, slightly earlier on, was it's half past eight. Sun sets in 12 hours, so I've got the full day to explore. I'm going to find, there's a cafe in Butterbeer. Hope's open, so I'm going to get some breakfast. I'm heading across to Parton for high tide, which is at half past, which is 11 o'clock. In fact, I better get a move on. Yep, let's get them trees. Yeah, pack away first, Andy. Pack away first. Don't lug it all across there. So, from this place, from the boat, ah, oh, I'm doing a selfie. See ya. <laughs> 